Hi, and welcome to the Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast. Today is April 2nd, 2013. Um, and did you say it was autism? It is Autism Awareness Day. Thank you, Dawn, for the reminder. I forgot. Are you wearing your blue? Do you have your blue on? That is the official ribbon, I guess, for this year, along with the puzzle pieces for autism awareness. Um, so, um, we are wearing our blue. Um, I am wearing a hat to hide the bad hair day from crawling out of bed. It's not doing a particularly good job. I have no excuse. Um, but, um, warning, this is... (laughs) I thought you said you weren't going to do that on the podcast. It's your fault. (laughs) She did the Smurf song. It's really hard to get that out of your head once you get it in your head. And it's all her fault. Now I, have, I'm sticking to it. now I have Neil Patrick Harris in my head doing the uh, yeah. video, <gasps> doing the guitar <laughs> with a lot of the smurfs in the back going, la, 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 la. just integrating that. And it was to Aerosmith, right? Mm-hmm. I can't remember. Yeah. I've only seen that movie anyway. all the way through once. This is uh, going to be a long podcast. You don't need to do yes, it longer. Yes, it is going to be a long one. We have a lot to show, and they'll probably be various and sundry geek me out. Mm-hmm. Um, it is what we do. Yes, so I just figured I'd warn you ahead of time, and that clunk was me putting down my tea, so take this opportunity to put us on pause and grab your own uh, tea beverage of some Hot sort. or cold, I know it's getting warm in some areas. Dawn, who has I have cold degrees. tea, she I has hot tea. I don't, the only thing I have it in a hot cup is because I just don't want to spill it all. Well, it also is thermal, it'll keep it cold. Mm-hmm. So, moving on. Yes. Oh, welcomes. Welcomes, yes. Um... While we're welcome, we always welcome our um, continuing returning members. Um, But we also want to welcome our new ones. And there's something in my Um, (laughs) name. Welcome to our returning group. We're really glad you came back. Yes. um, And I am hoping I don't mangle the new members' names. Uh, We now have 88 members. Yay! Um, We have. Riki, I believe that's how she pronounces Riki that. Riki or Rieki? It reminds me of Riki Tiki Tavi. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't, and I'm, although I think it's Riki Tiki Tavi for the Yeah, book. It's, it's R-I-K-K-I. Okay. But that's what it reminded me when I saw it. I was like, yeah, oh, maybe laugh. I was maybe smile. So happy. But it's Reiki or Riki. I think it's Reiki. Reiki. R e i k. R e i k i. Anyway, her name is Anne, and we're really glad she's here. Yes. And then J Ladybug six seventy one, but she provides no name. Um. And so we welcome you, J Ladybug six seventy one, and also Sally from Idaho, yeah. um, who is Sally, and, and I believe I've heard your name on other podcasts. I think she's won prizes or something because she's familiar to me too, and we're really glad she joined the group. So welcome, uh, Anne, and, and well, I guess ladies because they're all ladies, all three ladies, all yes. three ladies. I presume I don't think there's going to be a guy named J Ladybug six seventy one. Mm, no, I. What's that? That's her telephone. Excuse me, my husband's not home. I'm going to pause for a second. And we're back. Uh, Sorry about the interruption. My husband is on the road or at the gym, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't him calling. It was not, and so I just let it go to voicemail. All right, which leads us right into projects. Um, I think we've welcomed um, various and sundry. I think everyone probably has their tea and like right now. I have iced tea. <coughs> I have <coughs> chai tea. <laughs> Hers really isn't even worth message- mentioning. She always has chai tea. Well, I told Michelle that I would share it with her. We had a plur conversation, and Michelle and I are having our chai tea. I cannot possibly have chai tea with Michelle if I'm not having chai tea. Now, can I? <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm a little silly. I think I caught the giggles from Dawn's last podcast. I didn't watch Don's last podcast. No. It's very cute. They both have little bunny ears, James and um, and Don, and they look really cute. <laughs> so the first project, I actually picked this up for the first time in a long time. Um, this is uh, my progress. And <laughs> progress. Progress and progress. This is my project that I'm calling Legless. It is the Vivian Biosala Teague. Um, it is size 36 for me. I've been working this, on this almost a year now. <laughs> we keep putting it down. Yes. Uh, it's on US 9 Nit Picks Interchangeable Circulars. Um, and I'm using Stonehenge Fiber Mill Shepherd's Wool in a blue spruce colorway. 
I've gotten very good at not calling it Bruce Bruce. You're getting there. Um, I've got my Green Lantern um, notions bag in here. I had really good uh, Green Lantern this last time, but I don't like what they're doing with Aya. Yeah. Um, I like the one babble where they couldn't speak yeah, to each other. Yeah, that was fun. They spoke at each other, not to each other. It was funny. It was, yeah. But anyway, And we discovered how much Hal likes talking to himself. <laughs> he loves the sound of his own voice. Oh, <laughs> he talks when he gets nervous. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, but I managed not to be at in the middle of a row. I actually ended on purpose at the end of a row, so I wouldn't be um, in the middle of a row when I showed you guys it, because that way you could see the cable. Oh, well, isn't that pretty? Have you worked on it at all, or this week? Yeah, that's why I'm showing it. Well, it's a working project, doesn't it? I only show it if I work on it. project. <laughs> I only show it if I work on it this week. Um, I've done about six rows in the past couple of days. I want to see your stitch marker. So, there's stitch marker. Oh, there's two of them. I don't know if you can see the cables really well. Hang on. Let me grab yeah. the cable section. There, okay, there you go. Now you can see it. Oh, isn't that pretty? So you can see the cable. It's not showing the green overly well. Well, we've lost a little bit of the light because... And this is also a hard color show because it's darker. It's like right. a, a darker green. But you can see the cable. I wish that thing had poked me in the eyeball. <laughs> um, I just want to pull a little bit. It's really, really, it looks a lot more defined when you see it in person because... There, you can see it kind of there. Yeah, because we're, we're getting, it's, it's about 4 o'clock right now. We usually like to podcast about 3, but another thing came up that we'll tell you about later on that we had to to get on to before it disappeared. So there's the sideish back panel and then the back itself is all seed stitched there. So is it one is this yeah one piece around? It is one piece all around. Right. Um so it's not like the one you're making for me where you have panels. Yeah, I'm actually in um the waist section. It's kind of decreasing. I work straight for a while mm -hmm. in pattern and then I'm gonna start coming out again for the upper part of the body. So you're doing that. It's yeah. a very shaped uh, yeah. sweater. It's really pretty. I like the color. It was the third sweater I decided I wanted to make. So this, I've been knitting on this for about a year. Um, I, you know, I didn't think small when I first started. I decided to start with a cable sweater, or not start start. I started with a plain sweater when I first started knitting. That was Grandpa's, right? No, it was, yeah. it was uh, Grandpa's. Grandpa's was the first knitted one. Yeah. yeah, Grandpa's was my first knitted sweater, first knitted project. My second knitted project. Um, my that second thing, knitted sweater, that red thing. My second knitted sweater was actually Grandma's colorwork sweater. I didn't finish it first, right? But that was my second chosen one. So color I went work. from I went from plain sweater colorwork. The third one I cast off was cabled. <laughs> I didn't think small when I first started. Um, the this one is, so is a year old though because I keep putting it down. It really doesn't require that much concentration. I just need to make sure. It's really soft. I mean, it's not as soft as some of the others, but it's very soft. Is it shepherd's wool? It is shepherd's wool. Yeah. So that she is. smell like sheep <laughs> when you get it wet. <laughs> yes, but I do love this. It has little specks of blue, but not enough to be annoying. Um, not that blue is annoying, but I don't always like specks of something in my stuff. Right. Because then it then I get annoyed when I'm knitting because I have this huge speck of something and I try to pull it out. But it's in my. Um, Knitting my bag, uh, knitting sheep's bag. It's this water's gonna get big for it eventually, and I have I have a firefly bag coming in. Okay. Um the uh, which it was uh Slipstitch Studios had a uh bag of the month deal. I didn't get the uh uh the huge bag of the month deal where you get a small sock bag, a large bag uh, the pattern and some kind of needle hook case. You need a needle hook case and um, a uh, pattern magnet thing. Um, I just got the large bag, but it's a large bag that has a bunch of different sayings from the Firefly show. It's sweater size. Th that'll this will probably go in there when that bag arrives. And that'll arrive in May. I'm sure I'll still be working on this in May. I put one of their bags once I finally found out. I was looking under sheep stitch. No, Black Sheep Dye Works and Sheep. And I could, finally said, I'm going to Talia's page and find out where the stupid bag is in Etsy. So I found it and I put on my wish list. They had a red one and a blue one, I think it was. And it was, um, what was it? 
I think it was some kind of sayings or something. I can't remember, now I can't remember what it was. I mean, his brain just went dead. But I put it on, it was a large bag. And it was, mm -hmm. it was nice. I got the, I had the blue one on my wish list. But I had to wait. Um, I just got the nice big Lois bag, and I'm waiting for her to get her, um, she's working on a fiber bag, I think. Mm -hmm. I hope that's not letting out a bag that's been on her board. So I'm waiting for that to come out to buy that. And so I don't want to buy too many other bags at this point in time. Speaking of which, you need to grab something out of one of your lowest bags to start Yes, I showing. am going to. I had to move my turtle out of this bag because it outgrew it. So this is my this is my blanket, my Nicole. And I'm not going to go over all the things. I've been telling you every week what my cable needles are and all that. So I'm not going to tell you about that. I'll tell you next week if you want to know. This is all garter stitch. And I did about, I did a fair amount on this because I felt like doing mindless knitting. And I'm going to start marking it again because I think I did about, I think maybe half of this brown horizontal. Right about there. Yeah, I did about half of that. And it's fairly, I mean, you can't really see it. Because, yeah, yeah. Turn about a spare play. You can't, you can <laughs> kind of see how long it is. Oh, stop giggling for no reason. Gosh. I think I'll poke her in the middle. <laughs> so I, I worked on this while I was watching television or, you know, Generally, just not being able to give my full attention to anything, and it's grown so big that I went ahead and moved this out of the other bag I had it in and put it in here. I have, I still have a fair amount of the yarn. I have this much yarn to go, so it's quite a bit more yarn. But I also have the the color I'm going to do next, which is this green. So, so it will be a different color, not yay. in the shade of brown. <laughs> Look, she's gonna be go. She's gonna look on the on the podcast one day. And go. <gasps> she changed the colors. <laughs> we'll give her warning beforehand. I don't want to give her too much of a shock over there. <laughs> you know, she might <laughs> not appreciate that. So, I love Snook. She's funny. She she motivates me. Okay, so that's that's my Nicole. And so we're gonna just keep going keep on to the next project. Oh, and the bag is my Lois sea turtle. All of her bags are Lois right now. Uh, um, yes, they are. And this is my plover bird bag, the colorful frogs. Um, and um, my brain went somewhere. Anyway, um, uh, it's the Heavenly Sapphire Project. This is my purse knitting right now. It's the twin set sweater and cardigan by Claire Montgomery, making it for mom. It's from the book Knitting Vintage, although I finally copied the pattern from the book and put it in a uh, pattern keeper in my purse so I could take it with me. Because it's worked in pieces and parts, so it's easy to carry. Um, I tore out, like I mentioned last week that I was going to, I uh, tore it up and send the shawl. Because I didn't really care if I had the finished product or not. I didn't like the fabric I was getting with the size of needles I was getting with the yarn. So I just said, I don't want to work this and tore it out. Um, anyway. This is Heavenly Sapphire in here, the Twin Set Sweater and Cardigan by Claire Montgomery, using Knit Picks, Andy and Treasure, and the Sapphire Heather colorway. This is Alpaca. Soft. And Ooh. I think I'm almost at the point where I can start on this. I love the color on this. Now I so my color. I'm not in the middle of this either. How'd that happen? No Lindsay's right now. No Lindsay's right now. She's very upset with you. I doubt it. And this is curling. No, she'll be doing the Lindsay's. This is curling, but well, it's stopping it. Yeah. Actually, the color's showing up fairly well. I love this color. It's so this, pretty. Usually it shows up black, but this is actually showing up a nice blue. It's almost showing up purple, but it's... I mean, it's, it is close to your shirt, and, and that's what it's showing up as. Yeah, and I can't show really very well, because it's curling like crazy with the stockinette. You should show the ribbon on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it, but it's... So, I mean, it's almost, this particular piece is almost done. So I can pretty soon take this out of my purse and start the next um, piece. It's soft and makes me happy. And this has been my shopping knitting, my going out and about knitting. I need to put a doohickey down where the sleeve with formation for the um, armpit starts so I can measure out um, how long I've been doing the back section. How did I do that? I do not know. You're Talented. Are you talented? I am very talented. Very, very talented. You can't even begin to grasp the depth of my talented. It's hard to draft. Draft. Draft? 
<laughs> I'm sure it is hard to draft. It's hard to grasp. That's why you. Ha that's why you have to um, draft when you're holding down your spindle instead of having it hanging. Anyway, but you wouldn't know that. Okay, my next project. Are you, are you done with that one? Yes, I am. I'm just okay. trying to collect. Oh, I have a small yarn ball. That's why. Most the Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this is in my lowest knitting my Parking bag. Parking draft. That's what's called. Parking. My knitting's my bag. Faith, hope, and love bag, which I love, and no pun intended. Whee! And this is the Sedna shawl, which I call Colorful Dreams. And because it's that stockinette, it really is curling. It drives me nuts. I did have to tink back a little bit. In fact, what had happened was I um I was putting another lifeline, and I'm not sure what I did, but I did something wrong. So I tinked back to the other lifeline, and now I'm back to where I was to start. I think. But I made a fair amount of progress. I took out the first um, lifeline I put in. So now I only have two. And I'm, I'm happy with the way it's looking. It's pretty. It's pretty. As you can see, it's a little bit darker on the screen, but it's pretty true color. It's curling like crazy. But well, it's stuck in it. Yeah. That's to be expected. I think I'm going to have to. Um, get a bigger cable because it's starting to bunch a lot. I don't like working with it quite that bunch and it's getting bigger so I don't want to have to worry about that. I'm working the, the Sedna on, it's by Marilyn Lynx and I'm using um, US 4 3.5 millimeter needles that are um, Knit Picks Harmony Wood and a 32 inch cord at the moment. The yarn is Plymouth Yarn Stiletto Sock in the Nemers or Rainbow Colorway and I'm also going to be using um, No Maker Skinny Dipper Yarn in Orange. So I, I made some progress. I did more knitting on this than it looks like I did because I did have to take that. Um, I'm not, I'm getting less scared of my knitting now because I've torn this out so many times. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned a lot when I was doing it in it, the Nightwing uh, hallway. I really strongly suggest that people who are learning to knit use this because it's got a very simple, yes, there's some purling, and it'll help you learn to purl because every every time you come back, it's all purl. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, you do your yarn over, so it's really very simple. You have to pay attention to it, but it's very simple. And if you have to take back, it's not really difficult. So I think this is a really good starter project, and I thank Nicole for bringing that to my attention from um, Hot as Knitter from, um, uh, what's it, Knitting? Positively, Positively knitting. knitting. Positively Knitting. So that's a really good, I like the pattern a lot. Okay. Okay, next, I'm kind of rolling it along because I have a lot of projects this time. Yeah, usually I'm the one who um, pushes things along. This is, I worked on Besk a little bit. It's attached. His yarn balls are in my TARDIS Bigger on the out, Inside um, bag. Bigger on the inside, yay. <laughs> so it is Bigger on the inside holding many mushy yarn balls. Um, and you can't tell if there's been progress made, but there has been. Turn the head. Yeah, he's turning his head. It, um, eventually, I think I have a few more short row part, short, short row repeats before I can actually just keep going around. I'm wondering if you, if they, you know, if you're doing this with no time, you know, just kind of fooling around, if you can make a unicorn with this, just making it. That's no. the back of the head, though. You don't want. Oh, it's the back of the head. This not is the back. top of the head. Yeah. No. Okay. You see where this is a turn for the back of the head. The top of the head would it's be forward that way. No. And that's when I start going around like this. Gotcha. And that's not giving away anything because I haven't actually looked at that part of the pattern. I'm just guesstimating. Yeah. Um, and I can see that looking at it now. But you know, you can see the cables there. It's so pretty. And the color changes. I really and like it's soft. this. It would not be good to wear. But no, it'd be very itchy. This is what I originally got from Mom's sweater, but it was the wrong weight. It was too heavy. And um, it would have been way too itchy. But it's making a very beautiful um, horse. So I, have, I haven't worked on him a lot this week, but I have worked on him some, some. I just don't feel like doing short rows right now, so I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's sort of, sort of subtle striping here. There is. Yeah. Um, there is. It actually, it shows up better on the screen. Yeah, it does. You're right. Um, and the cables show up fairly well. Mm -hmm. But, yes, 
His head went boof backwards. Boof? <laughs> boof. <laughs> boof. That's a technical term? Yes. I am. Um, you, this is Patty's Pillow Pony by Allison Cleaver. I call this project Besk. Let me just drop Besk down here. I don't want to drop him literally because he's got needles sticking out of his head. Um, you, I'm making him using US 8 Nipix um, needles. Right now I'm using my DPNs. Um, and I'm using Yarn Bees and his alpaca. 85% acrylic, 15% alpaca in the R Best colorway. And this horse will be approximately 13 inches high and 14 inches long. He'll be a little bigger than that because the needles I'm using are several sizes bigger than the ones suggested because that's what my yarn, uh, the yarn I chose suggested. So it's going to be a big toy. I like big toys still because I like sleeping with my crocheted mini toys. I sleep with that big dog I made from Seas of Chalk all the time. That's a nice dog to sleep with. Right? It is. What one? Okay. Uh... I was just going to say, this doesn't have the inches in it. But. All right, I had to move my turtle out of my big turtle bag because he outgrew it. So oh, we wanted to compare. We can compare the sizes mm -hmm. when sure, um, your sure. turtle is. Um, I moved my turtle because all I'm holding is yarn, and it really doesn't need this big bag. This is my lowest bag. I think it's, I forget what this is, the Sarah bag? I forget. I call it my Monet bag. <laughs> but anyway, my turtle, when you last saw him, I had... One, the bottom part of the shell finished, and I was working on the top multi. I think you were almost done with the top. Um, well, I had a few, several rows, yeah. Mm -hmm. But this is where I'm at now. He is a big turtle, okay? He is a big turtle. I started on the front fin, and they have the... I didn't know there were crocheted short rows. They have, are. yes, they have the equivalent of crocheted short rows here. So she's on her crochet short rows, and I'm on my knitted ones. And this is a big toy. According to the pattern, I'm not very good at um, at adjusting, so I'm not going to try. It's going to be 30 centimeters in height and 15 centimeters long. So it's going to be a big I wonder, toy. Let's see, I'm gonna do, and the while width, you're talking, I'm going to search yeah, for the, the width from fin to fin is 50. Centimeters. Okay, so let's see. Centimeters to inches. I'm just really curious what the... Yeah. I'm having fun with them. It was a little bit... Um, let's see. A little bit challenging to figure out with the with the fins. I think I have the right fin where it's supposed to be. Okay, so give me the centimeters again. Sorry. Um, shell diameter is 30 centimeters. So 30... That's the diameter. Centimeters. That's around. Okay, so that's about 11 inches. Around. Okay, and it's 15 centimeters high. 15 centimeters high. 5.9. Okay, and it's 50 centimeters. That's the length from head to tail. 19 inches. Okay, and then the width from fin to fin is 50 centimeters. You said 50, so it's 19, 19. Yeah. So, in comparison to the horse, which is... 13 high and 14 long. So the, they're approximately, you know, they're, they're, they're within quick. the ballpark. I mean, my, hers is just more high and mine is more wide. Um, but, the, they, I mean, they barely fit in the same. Screen. Yeah, it's hard to. Because the horse is not going to be as wide. As wide right. See, this is very round. It's, it's, well, it's almost as high standing up except for your head. And my head's not... And your head's not finished. I mean, head. look, also this adds to the height. Right, and, but then you've got this added to the length. So it's very yeah. close. It's a very... This is a really... It's a really nice, uh, soft toy. The only problem I had was determining when she says to put the right fin on, it's, I didn't know if she meant the right fin as I look at it or his right. And I think I... I think it's his right because I think this is starting to turn out the right way because it's got to go turn this way. So I think it's his right that, that you when she says do the right fin, and the left fin will be his left. I did a little mistake on the eyes. If you notice, the eyes are right on top of the head there. Right He's on top giving of you puppy turtle eyes. Yes. And I, the funny thing is, I looked at pattern pages before I did the eyes, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to make that mistake. They said they did something with the eyes, but they didn't understand, I didn't understand what it was they had done wrong with the eyes. Um, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to have the color of the eyes here. It didn't occur to me to put the color of the eyes here because whenever I do Stacy Trock or something, they're usually up here. <laughs> so, and even because your this thing would be like here. 
So um, I still like it. I'm not going to tear it out. It gives him personality. I do not know what his name is yet still, but right now he's going by Sammy. Sammy slash Strider. So um, Sammy Strider Myrtle. No, not Myrtle. Mur not Myrtle. Turtle. So this is this is my current. This is what I've been doing the most work on, and it took a ton of fiberfill to get it stuffed. So I'm having fun with it. I like him a lot. Okay, okay. Um, that brings 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 me on to um, Study in Scarlet, which is in my um, black and red sister studio bag. Um, this is the Ho Aloha Mystery Cow by Mel Ski. Um, and um, I'm using US 6s in the Stonehenge Fiber Mills Shepherd's Wool Garnet Colorway. Um, I have finally finished Clue 2 and started Clue 3. 20 million years beyond everyone else. Except uh, for Nittnerd. Except for Nittnerd. Although I'm sure she'll catch up with Oh, me. she will. You gotta love Nittnerd because she's. Makes you not be last. <laughs> I'm certain she will catch up with me. She definitely will. She's so sweet. Um, I was watching her podcast. She made I like the color of hers too. It's very similar to the color it's of red, mine. It's red, isn't it? It's, it's it is. Kind of a, yeah. Because she likes red. Yes, yeah, she does. Um, she also likes pink. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the exciting thing is, as soon as I can start the sleeves now because the body is all done. Yay! Isn't that beautiful? Which is exciting. I haven't attached the buttons yet. I decided to do four buttonholes, like they tell you to, because I like longer sweaters. I've got a long torso. Um, and I'm not sure why that's curling, because it's not stockinette. It's just curling, because it feels like it. Well, I think maybe because you've got it rolled up in the bag. Pro you're probably right. Um, so, I love it. there's that. And... Um, I just have to start with the sleeves. I'm going to see if I can do it with DPNs, but I'm going to pick up stitches, and I didn't feel like doing that before I went to bed, although I made sure I bound off the bottom before I went to bed. Yeah, that's almost maybe late for where I had to go. Well, I, just, I told you you didn't have to stay. Well, we're talking. Okay, so, that was very exciting. I was hoping to get the main body finished. Um, that It seemed to take, not that it wasn't fun, it was good mindless knitting, um, but the bottom seemed to take a while. Um... And the sleeves, I know, will take a little bit more concentration because I haven't, it's something that I haven't done. Um, once I get started on the sleeves, it'll be fine. It's just picking up the um, extra stitches for the underarm. Right. To make sure there's no holes. It's fine. I've done that for other sweaters. So I'm excited. I've got my DPN sitting in here. And this bag is amazing for all things sweaterly. Mm. I haven't had a chance to use mine yet. It's sitting in the with all my yarn for my blanket that Michelle got me to, to do for the autism awareness. I haven't had a chance to start it yet. Um, so, yes, there is that. Drop it. I forgot to tell you who my turtle was by. It's by Sonia Devlin. And um, and uh, I'm crocheting using G and F hook and No Makers, 100% Superwash Merino Wool in the Aurora No Mails colorway. Hobby Lobby, I love this yarn. Solid in limelight colorway and scrap yarn in white and blue. And uh, I just wanted to make sure I told you that before I went on. And I'm using six uh, US six knitting needles for my shawl, not four. I keep forgetting to change it in my in my notes. But I, I don't have anything else that works. And I have two other things. Um, you should let me go first this time because it would have. Oh. No, I did. The, yeah, I did my thing and started. Um, I started another project. Now, this one's going to be on hold a little bit. You won't see it next week unless the um, uh, pattern um, update gets re-released. Mm -hmm. This is McCavity. Cavity, McCavity, there's no one like McCavity. And I'm out of tune. Mm. But it's named after the bad cats in Cats. Yes. The Napoleon of the Crime. Oh. <laughs> um, this is the Amigurumi cat pattern. Bracken by Kate E. Hancock. Um, and it, I'm using a USG hook. Um, Hobby Lobby, I love this yarn, in a burnt orange colorway and red heart in the buff colorway. Um, and I started 
the body and originally when she did the ears she has really large ears that um, are just very large. She's doing a pattern update then the ears look a little more cat like so I'm waiting for that. So I'm going to put um, my cavity on pause. I love this orange for the cat. It just makes me really happy and this will be the mar what will go with it for like the face, the little mouth and paws and stuff. The accent, the accoutrement. So that'll be a very pretty kitty. It will be. It reminds me like a calico almost. Um, except he's not. He's a ginger cat. Yes, he is a ginger cat. Um, There's no black for the calico. So this will be on pause a bit. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't uh, done my uh, my Kate E. Hancock recently. My moose because. I just got sidetracked. I, I need to. I need to figure out the muzzle, and I just have been too tired to do it, so I've been doing other things, but it is going to be done, because I love it. Um, and the next one is one I just cast on for. It is in my red knitting sheep's bag. Um, is that another um, slip stitch? Yes, it is another slip stitch studio. Mm -hmm. um, it's blue pine. Well, I'm calling it blue pine right now. The pattern is white pine by Amy Christoffers. And I'm using Stonehenge Fiber Mill Shepherd's Wool. I'm not going to give you needle sizes right now because at this moment I am just doing the gauge swatch. Um, I know it's in here somewhere. <laughs> you remind me of Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know what I did. I stuck it in one of the pockets because I don't yet have a um, a doohickey on the bottom. Not on the bottom. I don't have a um, a mark, I think, to keep it from coming off the needles on there. So I stuck it in pocket. There we go. So my gauge swatch so far. Pretty blue. Now it's coming up almost the same blue as the other one, but it's not. No, it's not. It's more navy. More navy, grayish. It's pretty blue. So more shepherd's wool. We like our shepherd's wool. I was originally going to do it in acrylic corone, but the corone is actually a lot thicker of a yarn, and it would have ended up a lot bigger. I would have had to go down, down to one needle size. And I could feel it rubbing on my hands, like, this is not going to be pleasant to work with for a sweater. Um, so that's what I'm going to be used for something else. And as much as I like the idea of a washable sweater, I want to make the sweater making an enjoyable experience. So... Um, that leads on to FOs. I don't have any. I have two. I finished my Peep the Easter Chick, which is Amager the Amagaroni Easter Chick Pattern Arrow by Katie e. Hancock. And I used the G hook using I, Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn in yellow and neon orange colorways. But I don't think this counts as using three bright colors, even though he has purple eyes. Yeah, that's a shame. I'm still debating whether my turtle can be put in. It has three bright colors. It just but um, I wasn't going to add another color just for the... Uh, no, no. But, I mean, he has bright purple eyes. Does. It doesn't count, but he no. has bright purple eyes. He has bright yellow and he has bright orange. And he was finished in time for Easter. He's so cute. So, initially I wasn't happy with him until... Because I kept fiddling with his beak. But I am happy with him now. He's adorable. Okay, sorry. Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Yes. So, he is done. Okay, come on. Beep! Um, so, beep, beep, beep. Peeping. Peep. He's going over there. Wee! I'm going to change peep. Huh? Did you name him Pete? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, he just didn't look like Gloria. Okay. Yeah, especially if he's a he. Well, he decided he was a he. Um, and I finally, you'll notice that the Lady Bird blanket was not in the works in progress because it's finished. Yay! I don't have to work on a baby blanket ever again. <laughs> it's so exciting. Um, this is the Her Hoodie Bird blanket by Stacy Chalk. Using USH hook, I used the colorway orchid, and I used yellow, black, and white. It came out really nicely. 
So I'm going to There we go. And there's the feet down there too. So that finished. And here's Ladybird. That goes with him. That goes with him. Uh, now the it's gonna be a little boy, but both Josh and Mel like this color. And for a baby it doesn't matter. So um I'm hoping he will enjoy his bird hoodie and toy. I think he will. You know, he probably he gets it when he's little, he's gonna fall in love with it and then he won't want to give it up. Regardless, he won't know it's not manly to have a lavender. <laughs> well, he used to tell jo Josh. Josh never cared. I doubt his son will care. <laughs> and he shouldn't have to. Um, you knock it down my pen. So, um, the baby shower at the at the end of this month. I'm super excited. Um, you have to call the Donahue. I'll contact Mrs. Donahue on Facebook. Um, and I have to contact Mel and make sure of the date, but she told me it would be that weekend, because that's when I can make it, and I really hope, because I've had several people ask me to try to switch to that day, and I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't switch work for that day, I ha I'm going to be at a baby shower, yeah. um, I kind of have to be there. I was the best, best man, maid, maid of honor, maiden for that wedding, yes, um, and the, you know, I wasn't going to switch days if I was already working. But now that I'm not, no, no, I'm not working that day. I'm definitely not going to switch to be working that day. I mean, Mel really wants me to be there. Um, but those two, those are my two FOs. Fashion enhancement. Yeah. Um, we're skipping right over next on the hooks and needles because we really don't have time, and it's basically the same. Stash enhancements. Um. Talk to our friend Jackie, who said we could give her name. So it is Jackie Knits. And okay. she um, is doing a spring cleaning of her stash. And I showed you my first bunch of that yarn last week. The second bunch and last bunch came in just a few days after the last podcast. And this is my bag. Let's see. Sorry about the crinkling. If you have earbuds, that was probably very annoying. Um, she gave me, now this one, I think, I don't know if I actually asked for this one from Jackie or if she put this in as my surprise because she had some left over. But these are stretch socks. Um, I've never used a stretch sock yarn, so I don't know what the properties are, are of it. I don't know how, it is really stretchy. I'm not sure, if, I guess you just make socks out of it. I don't think you can make much else with it because it stretches. But maybe I can make something else. Maybe if I put another yarn with it, I can make something else. But I like the colors. I really do the gray and the white. I think it would make a really cute owl or something. Um, or a pair of socks for my husband or something. So I like this. Of course, I have to learn how to make socks first. Yeah, I'm kind of out of love with socks right now. My so my poor socks have not been touched for months. This yarn is one that it's Knit Picks Swish Superwash, 100% Superwash Wool with Aloe. And this is 110 yards, and I think it's worsted. I'm not sure. I can't find out where it says. It looks worsted. It looks worsted. Um, this one she had up for the offer, and then she said, oh, yeah, I have a darker green to go with it. And I said, oh, I want that too, and this is what goes with it. And I think this would make a dynamite turtle or something. You know, it's just cute, or frog or something. Well, you know, Mom, um, Katie Hancock's releasing her turtle. Yes. Yeah. Um, the seventh? Yes, something like that. This, and I could even put, except this is sock yarn. Oh, mom, that would be pretty. This would be great for the pops of color on it. But it doesn't, I mean, yeah, it is a little thinner, but. But no one knows for the little pops. For the little pops. This is the purple. That I would be pretty. You should do the turtle on that. Because you see, the pattern she's releasing is a little turtle, and she could do, what, this for the main color? This for the uh, shell, and there's supposed to be little pops of color. Mm -hmm. And little pops of purple would be really pretty. I think she should do that. We'll have to see how. Um, I've decided that's what she's doing. Yeah, she bosses me around. So I got, thank you very much, Jackie. Um, that's going to become a turtle. I really appreciate the yarn. I really appreciate your generosity. Thank you so much. Speaking of Jackie's generosity. This is um, more of her generosity. This is the um, 
Canopy? Canopy yarn. I used a worsted version of this colorway. Um, it's a Knit Picks yarn. Um, oh, I used a worsted way of this colorway to make my uh, shawl. The shawl that she wore the last few days. Podcasting. You've, you've worn it a couple times. Um, I've worn it at least once for podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't remember what I called it. Um, I think I called it Shades of Sherwood. I think that's what you called it, yes. Yeah, um, so, it's a really pretty yarn. I love the colorway, and I yoinked it as soon as I saw it. Um, yeah, I, I told her about it um, after she woke up. I didn't get it myself. I had that colorway, too, but it's worsted as well. Mm -hmm. I thought hers was fingering weight. And <coughs> I also picked up um, Ballad. I think this one might, might actually be DK. I think this might actually be DK. Oh, sport. I don't know. I'm not sure. Although it says size is recommended US 1 to 3, that might, it looks too thick to be fingering. It could be. It could, it could be. be. Um, it, it might be fingering still. So and it's coming out a lot more maroonish on there. It's really it red. It is very red. It's red. I mean, it is, it's not, it's not like a cherry red, but it's more red than it comes up on yeah, the screen. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, and then this one, I have made a sweater, my that fire sweater out of this um, particular yarn in different colors. I used orange, yellow, and red for my fire sweater. This is a really pretty um, gray. Um, Look, I'm looking at red. I'm trying to look for the colorway. It doesn't give me a color name. It's color 0605. I hate when they do that. We'll call it charcoal. Um, <laughs> it's Huntington yarn. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know this was machine washable. Oh, that's cool. That's good to know. Um, because my other was Huntington as well. I think that would go really well with this. It it would. I don't know if this other one is machine wash. That would be really pretty together. You dropped your other one there. You threw my other one. I did not, in fact. So, thank you very much, Jackie. I think these are gorgeous. They're um, absolutely beautiful. So, we scored big time. And we're very thankful. Thank yes. you very much. So, I'm going to put this back in the bag. Okay. So thank you, thank you. Let me see. What else do you have for? Oh, I. Food? Hang on, I gotta. <laughs> Can, how about you show your wool farm stuff? Well, I was gonna tell about the patterns first. Okay, do the patterns first. So I have to get this thing closed. I um. Well, that's why I want to know how many you had. I had um, the pattern that I got from um. From Sock Bunny. Sock Bunny, very generously. Kimberly. Oh, the same thing. I just didn't have from so it. From Sock Bunny, um, I didn't grab the pattern, but from Sock Bunny Knit and Fit Podcast Group, she had developed a beautiful, lacy kind of, um, she calls it bee leaf half pie shawl, I think is what she calls it. Have you contacted Michelle yet? Back yes, I did. I did. And we're going to be busy in August, probably. Um, but anyway... She has this beautiful pattern, and she very generously made it available to people. All they had to do um, was gift it to two other people, and she would pay the cost. For, it's her pattern. She would give it to them herself. You wouldn't have to pay for the pattern. You just had to give it to two people saying why you gave it to them. So I did my thing with that, and she gave me the pattern. And I thought, oh, this looks really pretty, but it looks above my level as a knitter. And I looked at the pattern, and she's really specific. I mean, she, she writes the pattern just looking at it, perusing it. I haven't looked at mine it, yet. It, she has it step by step. There's no, you know, run on directions, you know, knit five, purl two, yarn over, blah, 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 blah. No, it's boom, 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 boom. Exactly the way I like it so I don't get confused. Um, it looks like it'll be a challenge for me, but I think that um, other people will find it really fun knit. She tells you exactly how to do the beading, and I don't want to get into it because it is going to be a paid pattern. But um, it, it just it looks like a lot of fun. I wanted to say thank you to um, Kimberly for that opportunity because I am going to do uh, – Michelle from uh, Three Stitches has contacted me about possibly doing that together with her. So I'm excited about that because I've never done it. I'm probably going to be like, Michelle, what do I do next? <laughs> but um, – she, uh, I haven't heard back from the girls yet. But, well, um, they don't even know about it yet. Mm -hmm. Well, Michelle, Michelle doesn't even realize how she got the pattern yet, I don't think. True. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just 
little girl. Well, 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 now she'll realize. Well, I don't think she does know yet. I mean, I didn't say anything. I, I think she'll realize she, now. I, I have to give her a hug. She makes me smile. Uh, but anyway, and then um, do you want me to give the other pattern as well? Yeah. Okay. okay. The other the other thing is the other session has it pattern wise is the Cleopatra mystery shawl. It starts it started yesterday. I haven't done it yet, but I did get my I haven't started it yet, but I got my first clue. Um, I don't have a picture because obviously it's a mystery shawl. So it's the it's got um, all I can say is that it has um, crocodile stitches in it, and that's all I can say. I don't want to give away anything else. People who have the pattern know what it is, and I don't want to give it away to people who don't or who want to buy the pattern later because it is a paid pattern. But hopefully, I will finish this. You need to cast it on. I need to. I mean, not cast it on. I need to um, start it. I need to crochet it. So I might start that tonight, but I really want to work on my turtle, so we'll see what happens. I don't know how to do the um, crocodile stitch, so it'll be a new stitch. It'll be fun. Okay. Um, next for Sash Enhancement is Wolf Farms. Mm -hmm. um, I got my Green Apple Hand and Body Lotion. Uh, probably my favorite lotion of hers is actually the rose one, um, but I do like this one as well. Um, and then I also got my lip balm. Um, I got blueberry, grape, cherry, orange, and green apple. The green apple is my favorite of the lip oh, balm. I feel like I'm tasting uh, Jolly Ranchers. Yes, it, it smells like you when you open up the Jolly Rancher bat, little wrapper, it smells exactly like that. So. Uh, and this stuff feels amazing. Mm -hmm. Let me by open one. And I can't. I keep using going back and forth for me. It's my other one. That's open. Okay. I'm trying not to um, use two of the green ones at once. That's the heck with it. <laughs> I just use it. I need to stick one in my purse. Yeah, I do too. Um, but it feels almost medicated. And I've been trying to use more lip balm, especially at work. Because my mouth, my lips get so dry at work, like they crack, because mm -hmm. it's really dry in the hospital. And you don't drink enough sometimes, mom. Well, sometimes you don't have time to stop and drink. Mm -hmm. And even when I am constantly hydrating, it's just so it's super dry, dry in, in there. So I'm going to start carrying some of my scrub pants. And people at my workplace, I've had several people take down the Wolf Farm's name to pick up the lotion. I've been, I'll put some in my hands and I'll share some, and mm -hmm. I'll tell people they can just come by and take some of my lotion. So we all end up smelling it like roses. <laughs> or whatever did you have, right? Well, I had, I've had roses because I don't have the pump one at right. work. Um, Stumpy likes roses. I smell like roses. roses. <laughs> we'll do it all. I also have Stash and Hansons from Wolf Farm. She has lotion in the... The I one she has that I don't have is the uh, bath salts. Yeah, I got the bath salts. I haven't tried them yet. I'm looking forward to this. I'm not sure how you use bath salts. You just stick it in the bathtub. How much do you stick it in? I don't know. I have to. It says um, about a quarter um, of, cup. of a cup. No, a quarter of a yeah, quarter cup. Cup, yeah, a bath salt. So I will not use this every bath because I want to make it last. Um, of course, if Don and James will do me the favor of just having it in stock, that would be fine. I really love this scent. Keep you stocked with it. Yes, keep me stocked with the red, the green apple. I have the green apple body lotion. Which smells amazing. I love it. I also have their honeysuckle. Um, I have very dry skin. I don't hydrate the way I should, and I just have dry. Oh, hold on, my watch on. I do have dry skin anyway, and this stuff is one of the few things that really makes my skin feel good. The same thing with the lip balm, which I also have here in the apple. I my hands have been getting drier because of all the. Wa I've been trying to not use the alcohol. Uh, for right. washing my hands, I don't feel like it's thorough enough. I've been trying to wash my hands at work with lots of water. This. It's one of the few things, my lips will get so dry that they will bleed. Mm -hmm. And so this stuff, these, I need more. I need to put in my purse. I need to have them all over the house because I put this stuff on and my lips are really good to go for about five or six hours. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just fantastic. Don and James did a wonderful job with this. We bought, or Ty actually bought for my daughter, for Davina, um, cotton, candy. cotton candy and... Um, uh, candy corn. Candy corn, yeah. And I bought her a oh, No, it was, it was bubble gum and candy bubble corn. Bubblegum candy corn. I bought her um, for Christmas um, chocolate covered cherry lotion. She finally we finally got a the top to work for her. And she's really excited and my husband's like because <laughs> she doesn't know how to put on a little bit. <laughs> she puts on way too much. So it smells everything to chocolate. She loves it. 
Um, but at least the, the um, lip balm, no one will be able to smell. Yes, yeah, and she can smell because it's right under her nose. Yeah. Um, I, I, I liked Wolf Farm so much that I gave my mom, a mm -hmm. I gave her lavender and roses, I think it was, and the soap, and she, I, she liked We do that. not get any, um, kickback for this. We don't get any, um, We just uh, like this. We just love uh, this. We don't get any special discount mm -hmm. or, no, uh, no, no. This is, this is, monies this or, this is, this is true sponsorship. Well, no, it's, it's not it's, sponsorship. It's true, um, Customer satisfaction. Yes. Okay. They're they're super fast. I mean, we ordered this on a Saturday and it came in on Monday. Mm -hmm. Um, yesterday. So that I mean, their service is fantastic. Their products are fantastic. Please check them out. Um, if you like, if you need this kind of stuff, give them your business because they're really fantastic. And she makes everything hypoallergenic. Yes, it's all hypoallergenic, so you don't have to worry about it bothering your skin or whatever. So. Okay. On to obsessions. Although that kind of was an obsession. Well, I I did. Um, get, I, I'm not going to show you because you know what hooks and needles look like. I did pick up some um, crochet hooks because every time I go looking for a G or an H hook, it's in a project. So I picked up some hooks and I picked up some tapestry needles. That made me for, I like that. Uh, the thing you said, I didn't put this in my notes. Davina gave me for Easter that one, the pound of uh, Corona I was talking about. Two of them. Yeah, two of them. I mm -hmm. thought I was going to work with a sweater, but it's too rough for that. So I will um, just have a lot of red available for my toys. Okay, now we're done with these. Oh. Yeah. Do we do obsessions or we'll do autism awareness last? Yeah. So um, we got signed up for beginning spinner Yay! class. Yay! It's uh, it's and called this twenty fourth. It's called um, and it looks like it's my weekend off. If it's not, I'll switch with someone. But it looks like it's my weekend. It's off. called Spin Quest two thousand thirteen. They only had forty spaces and they only had ten beginners. I've never done a spinner a spinning thing in my life, so I really wanted to get the beginners. And they just posted it yesterday. And we couldn't figure out how to get registered, so I called Melissa Ricks of Wild Hair because she is local to us. Mm -hmm. Lucky us, yeah. Yes. Um, from Wild Hair Fiber Studios, I think it is. Wild, Wild Hair. Hair. Yeah. And uh, I know it's Wild Hair. I just don't know if it's Fiber Studios. And she does have a, a group on Ravelry, and she has an Etsy shop. Um, fantastic yarns and fibers. And she is co-running this uh, fiber this spin quest. So we're really excited. It's our first. Um, spinning class. Spinning class is our first really fiber class fiber related fiber related Although you activity. Although you did a knitting class. Yeah, but not this is not like this will actually have a few vendors, not a lot, yeah. but a few. It's gonna have a surprise package. That's right, it'll be before the Shenandoah one. Yeah, that we're, we're looking forward to doing that one too. Um, hopefully we can meet up with scarves, etc. There. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, we'll do something. Yes, but um, it's 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 not a big big. Uh, gathering, but it's our first, and we're excited about it. Um, apparently, we're going to be getting some kind of packet, and I'm assuming it has some fiber in it for us to do our I have a, um, a couple spindles from when I was trying to learn to spin a little bit. Um, I'm not overly fond of the bumpiness of hand spun, but we'll see if I like it better after going to spin class. Right, and I think I'm going to have to do some kind of supported spindle because I have trouble with my shoulders, so keeping my arm up like this mm -hmm. for an extended period of time could be problematic. And I have a supported spindle that she could use. Yeah. Um, not a true supported spindle. It could be either um, a drop or a supported. Yeah, I did a bottom whorl with a little point on the bottom. I just didn't want to go out and buy a spindle and then decide well, I, I have didn't, several, you know, so. didn't like it. So if I do decide I like it, then I'll... I don't think I have any that. fiber, I don't think I have any yarn on my support spindle. I think all of my Hank McCoy is on my uh, uh, top whorl. Right. And I'm not looking to pick up another hobby. Um, if I were to pick up another hobby, I'd probably be dying. But I don't have enough time to do writing and all that as it is. But I do want to learn how to do it. Just If I want to do it, I can do it. Yeah, she might decide she absolutely loves it. Mm -hmm. um, so, other obsessions. Katie Hancock, who yeah. is Patrick Moose. Um, she has a couple of new patterns coming out. We stalk her. Mm -hmm. Um, she, she has a sheep coming out. She has a cute little turtle coming out. The turtle's adorable. And she has an update for her kitty cat. So I am very excited. Um, keep an eye out on her. Maybe tell your friends about her. She's really good with her patterns. Yes. So, even though I'm still working on my first one, I really love her patterns. I've worked two bunnies. I've finished the duck, not duckling, the chick. I have a cat partially started. I just don't want to go any further until 
I have the updated one. Right, and I'm not doing. And they're doing testings for that now, so I'm hoping it'll come out. Soon. Right, and I'm not. I'm not doing the, the rest of the moves just yet because I, I need to get some of this other stuff done. But it is not being put aside. It's not even on hibernation. It's just has to be put aside for a few for a few days while I do something else, and then I'll get back to it. Um. Any other? Oh, I almost forgot my other obsession. This is not moving really nice. Oh yes. Geek time. Yes, I got my shipment from um, mycomicshop.com of Flash Comics. My Batman Superman ones are still coming in. I only have two of those. I always love the back of my head. It does Superman. Um, Drinking milk. Drinking milk. What bones of steel? Got milk. Wow, this has got to be like old. Yeah. Well, it's, all, it's 2000. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alright, so... This is how, now the paper in between is not how they packed it, that's my packing. What they did, so the way they separated it is they had, you know, this is one uh, set that's, you know, a series. They would have this facing one way, and they would have the next set facing its face ways. Mm -hmm. So it would still be separated. Back to into, front. Yeah, back to front. So that way it would still be separated into sections. So I have, this one's from 94 to 2000. It's all in sequence. Um, paper down here. Um, it looks like that might be mostly Barry Allen, although it looks like Wally might be in that too. Um, then this one I'm really looking forward to. I don't know why Barry's standing so much farther down than Hal. I really don't think he only comes up to his shoulder. No, I think I think he might be on a step or something. Or Hal might even have <laughs> Hal, something underneath him, yeah. Hal's wearing uh, high heels. He's feeling a bit, uh... <laughs> It's significant or yeah. something. Um, so Brave and the Bold, it's a Flash and um, Green Lantern issue. And I like Barry Allen and I like Hal Jordan. Woo! Um, so that set. I'm really looking, that's probably the one I'm going to start with um, in all actuality because that's the one I'm most excited about. Um, I like Team Up. I'm a little bit of a weird person like that. Oh, I like Team Up too. Um, then, uh, my husband calls it, it uh, calls it our, they're going to be friends. <laughs> well, Barry and Hal are friends. Um, and this one is 1987 to um, 1993. I wonder if this actually goes with. Well, it's separated. Well, it's 6, six 7, yeah. And this is 1994. This does go together. I mean, they might all go together. They're all numbered. Yeah, see, this is, this one's one, two, I bet these two, these two sets go together. Sweet! Okay. <laughs> I just got really excited. Uh, so I think these two together. Okay. Um, so that's actually all one section there. It would probably make one big book. Um, brave and bold. Ah, okay, then there's a bunch of the one time one. These are called the retroactive flashes. Um this is from the nineteen nineties. This covers flash in the nineteen nineties, which means it's probably Wally. Um although if it's lost in time that should be Barry. Nope, it's Wally. Okay. <laughs> The first page I flipped to says, Wally, get down! Okay, <laughs> that's Wally. Um, 1980s. Um, this is from 1987. No, he's a flat. Well, I think they all share their villains. Okay, Alan, this one, 1970s, this is Barry um, as Flash. If you're not a huge Flash fan, um, you apologize. I apologize, <laughs> but uh, if you are interested in Flash but not knowing a whole lot about him, Barry Allen is uh, Wally West's uncle, and when Barry Allen um, died uh, fighting the Anti-Monitor, he... Um, Wally West took over. Which has come back now to green, haunt the Green Lanterns. 
<laughs> I'm sure. The, the anti-monitor, not Barry Allen. Yes. <laughs> and actuality, if you read one of the more recent comics coming out, that came out, Barry Allen came back to kill the anti-monitor again. <laughs> so, um, it's a really, actually kind of a creepy comic because all the different people are coming back from the dead, um, including villains. This is um, The Flash, 100th page spectacular. This is 2011. A recent one. A recent one. Um, oh, although yeah. it looks like the artwork looks like it's more old. Um, yeah, it does. I'm not sure which Flash that is. It's a fairly young looking Flash. No. Yeah. Well, they were doing retro artwork. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure which Flash this is supposed to be. Stop! Don't pass up this issue. My life depends upon it. <laughs> because if you don't read it, it'll cease to exist. <laughs> I guess. Blue eyes, it's probably very, yeah. Uh -huh. Although the last page of the phone was green. Yeah, because Wally has green eyes. They don't actually show him without his thing on. Mm -hmm. So, um, interested in why his life depends on me reading this. This one is about Barry. Uh, this one I'm excited about. The life Story of the Flash, 100 page spectacular. And the first page, you're talking about how Barry's kid was late for everything. He was late for signing for classes, he was late for the science fair, just Late, late. Always. Even at the flash, he's late for everything. Because <laughs> he gets distracted. Um, he just, it just means he could do more things during that time period to get distracted. <laughs> I don't think Wally has the same issue. It's just Barry's personality. He gets distracted and he's like, oh, gotta do this, gotta help this person. Gotta, blah, blah, blah. gotta tell Barry the hour beforehand. If it's at one o'clock, you have to tell him at noon. Yes, because otherwise he will. Not be there. Not be there. He'll get there and he'll be really apologetic and everything, but yes. Okay. okay. So I'm really excited about all my Flash comics coming in. Okay. Where are my notes? I think we are ba back to uh, autism awareness. Yeah, because I lost my notes anyway. Well, what to do with them? Oh, they're probably on the ground somewhere. Okay. I remembered them today. They were very oh, upset yeah. with me. Even Happy was upset with me because I forgot them last week. So here they are. Here's Rainbow and here's Happy for Autism Awareness Day and Month. Uh, April is Autism Awareness Month. Today is Autism awareness. Autism awareness Day. As we said at the beginning of the podcast, I hope you have your blue on. I'm going to give you um, a couple of facts about autism awareness. I won't keep you too long because we're running a bit long. Although we're, doing really we're not doing too bad, but... So I've got a few things to say. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I'm not going to go down the entire list. Um, if you're not interested for whatever reason in autism awareness, this will be the time for you to say goodbye. Um, hopefully you'll stay um, because it's important. 1% um, of the population of the children in the United States ages 3 to 17 have an autism, an autistic spectrum disorder. Okay, that's a lot. Prevalence is estimated at 1 in 88 births. Um, and, it, and then 1 to 1.5 million Americans live with an autism spectrum disorder, have a family member or something with autism, and it's the fastest growing developmental disability. It's growing at 1,148%. That's huge. Um, I didn't realize it was that fast. That's a 10 to 17% annual growth rate. Um, the costs are astronomical, um, and 60% of the costs that are being expended are for adult care. Um, they're saying that costs of lifelong care can be reduced two-thirds with early, early diagnosis and intervention. My daughter was um, diagnosed at age three, non-categorical. They did not think she had autism, which she does not. She has Asperger's syndrome, and that was a relatively new thing. So it's an autism spectrum disorder. It's autistic, autistic spectrum disorder. Sorry about that. I can't seem to talk today. They had, they had originally classified her at age three as non-categorical. They went through Fragile X testing, which I is know that. yeah, which is a spectrum, uh, also on the spectrum. Um, she had all kinds of testing until this wonderful doctor that we had in England. Uh, an American Air Force doctor. Uh, I think he was the one who. Yeah, he was the one who tagged her with um, Asperger's. So I'd never heard of it. Even with my special ed degree, I had not heard of Asperger's syndrome. It was not well known at that time. Um, and the prevalence is on the rise. 
Um, education is really important. I'm not sure how much of it is prevalent and how much of that is becoming a catch-all. Well, it is becoming a catch-all, but it's also that people are knowing what to look for. Yeah. The problem is, is that a lot of the um, autistic spectrum disorders, um, PDD, PDD, NOS, and all that kind of stuff are being lumped together. And so it's hard to tell how much is what, you know, what disability. Um, the unfortunate thing is that um, not, I think they said, I can't find it right now, I think it's on a different page, um, that something like 58%, only 58% of autistic, not necessarily Asperger's, but autistic individuals get their degree, get their diploma from high school. Um, so it's really important to spread the awareness around, um, maybe donate to your local autism you know, society or research uh, uh, group so that they can um, step up the research and, and get more programs for Or even children. just raising your own awareness, awareness in the mm -hmm. community. Um, and I'm not advocating that you donate. I'm, I'm just saying that would be great, but I'm not saying you have to or should yeah. or anything like that. I'm just throwing it out there. And I will give at a later date, you know, people who support autism, and if you would like to look that up, that's fine. But, um, but even just raising the awareness is great because um, it's hard for these kids and their families. It's very difficult as a parent, even as a, from a child or of an adult who has the severe autism or any kind of autism or Asperger's type thing, to have people look at them because for the most part the kids don't look any different. The people don't look any different. And when they start acting differently, mm -hmm. depending on how severely they are affected, you get some very unkind remarks, you get stares, you get, even now, in church even sometimes, with very good families, children will stare at Davina. Sometimes even adults do. And it's I would not, tease as a kid about her. And it's, it's very, they, they need to be made aware. I don't mean tease, I mean jerky kind of stuff. Yeah, you, you need to be, people need to be made aware that, the, that these are people. They're, they're not freaks, they're not, you know, they're just people who are different. Um, so I'm not going to go on and on about this. I just wanted to give you a few of those statistics to think about. And uh, then I want to thank you for continuing to. We have now, like, I think we have 17 or 12 or I don't know. So we have a few more projects in our yes. autism, um, in our project um, finished objects thread, which we're, I'm so excited because we do have nine wonderful prizes. Um, Knitting's my bag, uh, project bag, Cloverbird project bag, patterns from um, from uh, Anastasia Knits and patterns from um, Katie Hancock. Very nice, yes, very nice um, prizes. prizes. So please, you know, go ahead, tell people, um, have a little fun with the colors, do whatever you want to knit or crochet, as long as it's got the three colors in it that are happy colors, um, and have a chance to win a really nice prize in, in the process. All right. Well, actually, we did not run as long as I thought we would, um, even with all the geeking out. Um, I think we had more geeking out last week. Or I think we did. Have, I tried to keep it moving because I knew we had a lot of stuff to mm -hmm. cover. Um, thank you for showing up. It has been um, fun this week. It will take all my effort not to make it off and try to read Flash, but I will attempt to do so. Um, I'm not going to get much of a chance to read him tonight because I'm going to be getting on Skype with a nursing school friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, the one who makes the buttons. Or the beads? She makes beads. beads. She's yeah. going to, she told me she was in the process of making buttons. Um, but I've been stalking her Etsy shop and she hasn't yet. I'm going to. You need to ask her to make I'll, me. I'll talk to her. She, she, I want her to make me um, stitch markers. I want her to make me angels and turtles. I should tell her that stitch markers, if she starts making those, it'll um, she'll find their sales go up. Yeah, because um, I will. Um, what her name? It's called Emily. Emily Beads. Actually, let me. Um, oh, where's your pen go? Emily Beads. Um, I'll do. Um, I, I'm I'll put on the page her um her Etsy shop. I want to make a special order with her. I want stitch markers. I'll have to make sure I talk to Emily tonight about yeah. stitch markers. Um, actually, let me write a note about that too. Yeah. Because. Talk to Emily. Tonight, and it's a relatively new shop. It is an Etsy shop. It's called Emily's Beads, and I think you'll like what you see there. She she's a good kid. She, she's a kid, right? She's twenty. 20 so you know that she's been in nursing for like four years, she's right? She's still a kid to me. <laughs> um, she's still a kid to me. 
Gosh, it's been four years. Uh, She's an old lady, kid. Gosh. Anyway, um, yeah, Emily is a nurse like myself. We went to nursing school together. She makes beads. She's going to start making blessings. I'm going to try to get her to make stitch markers. No promises. I'm going to try that. Right. Um, it's not that far afield. All she has to do is add a metal thing to yeah, if beads. you if you would, if you'd like to help her to be able to do this, let us know what you prefer for the closures. I mean, I understand that the knitting ones generally are just little round things with whatever hanging off of them, but I know the crocheted ones can be open and shut or they can be, you know, just kind of hooked on. What do you prefer? I, I personally like the ones that open up and close. Yeah, I don't know what, um, I figure whatever Emily has available is going to be what happens because I don't want her to... Well, she can, she can give her, you know, she's not going to have any of that stuff anyway, so sure. if she has to go get it, at least uh, she might as well get what will sell. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't even know if she's... I'll bring it up to her tonight, but I'm not sure if she even wants to get into stitch markers. But she might not, but I'll still ask her to make me some. <laughs> she feels like she has it in. Uh, how did you ever... You met Emily, right? I met her once, yeah. Um, at, her, at your um, capping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she reminds me of your Aunt Jane. Yes, I do remember you mm-hmm. saying that. Because I think that you guys took pictures of us together. Mm-hmm. Um, for nursing and the capping ceremony... Um, oh, and this is for notable needle... Uh, Needles, if she's not done her capping ceremony yet. Coming close. It should be coming close yeah. if she hasn't done it. I'm not sure if every school does it, but for my school, the junior year, you had a capping ceremony, which means you wore white, uh, and I don't know what, the, I don't think the guys got a cap. They must have gotten something. I can't remember what the guys got. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the girls, at the very least, we got a nursing cap, a good old-fashioned nursing cap. And it was pinned on, and um, we looked like good old-fashioned nurses. Yeah, I mean, it was really cool. I for a little while I actually wore. Well, your 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 patients got went where the cap went after a while. I had some of the workers like who were not in nursing themselves get really upset when I stopped wearing the nursing cap. Um, but it was difficult with you know my stethoscope off and isolation, and I only had the one nursing cap. No, you can't, it's hard to wash it. You really do need to wash it. Um, and there was too much um, nostalgia behind the cap for me to really want to uh, risk. Didn't you get Mrs. Anderson's nursing cap? Didn't Mr. Anderson? No, Mr. Anderson could never find oh, Mrs. Couldn't Anderson. couldn't find it. Yeah. Because he wanted to find her cape. She mm-hmm. had the good old-fashioned nursing, you know, blue nursing Mrs. cape. Mrs. Anderson was in her 60s when she died, I think. Was she, she turned 70? I'm not sure she, she so put stuff as to say she was a nurse a long time ago and she had the cape and the cap and all. Mm-hmm. And we're running way over. Yes. But <laughs> um we told her we would. Mm-hmm. Uh we always keep our promises. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um that was kind of a off into randomness. But yes, check out Emily's beads on Etsy. Um she makes bracelets. She has a lot of beads. I love her little turtle beads. I <laughs> want so one. Cute. I want one. Shameless promotion for Emily. Because oh, yeah. she's a friend. Oh, and I've known her. Gosh, it's been seven years now. Because, well, I didn't know her very well freshman year, although we apparently took psych together and I never knew it. I was too busy falling asleep during psych. Well, that happens sometimes. And my good friend Val and I didn't know we had known each other for, like, whatever. We had speech class together and everything. <laughs> I don't know who you are. I didn't actually meet Em until sophomore year. We. Had, we were at the same hospital for clinicals, even though we were in the same clinical group. Both of us were anal about getting places on time, so we'd drive up together. It was just two of us. So it was about 45 minutes drive one way. So there's a lot of time to talk to your the other person in the car, so we really got to know each other during those drives. Good old Kindred. <laughs> that was the first hospital we had clinical then. Um, so, yes. Not gonna. So, but say, just say, that say one. Goodbye now. Bye. No. <laughs> just that one. <laughs> goodbye I'm now. I'm not gonna reflash. Most likely tonight, because I'll be talking to Am. But gotta go <laughs> because we're running over. So thank you for watching and happy crocheting and knitting and happy Easter. Happy Easter. Um, have a great April. God bless. Bye bye. Bye bye.